this is going to be my beginner tank build for the High Isle patch. Uh, I'm going to go over the gear and the skills and the passives and the CP. And then separately afterwards, I'm going to go over my beginner tank guide for this patch and how to play it, how to play as a tank for this patch. Any kind of changes there are. If you're new to the game, if you're new to tanking, we're going to go over a little details you need to know of how to perform as a tank. So firstly, we'll start off with the build. So for this particular build for a beginner tank, I'm a Dragon Knight tank. I'm going to go over more detail on different class choices later on. But if you are brand new to tanking, the easiest class to play is the Dragon Knight. The reason for that is their access to skills that can boost their sustain. You've got um, the use of your ultimate gives you all your resources back. You've got the fact that you can heal with a burst heal. And you've got the fact you can heal with uh, heals over time as well. So you've got lots of different options for healing and sustain and survival. So great, great option. There's lots of little utility skills in there that other classes don't have. So the Dragon Knight is the class I will always go with for a beginner tank. In terms of race, again, it's not hugely important. There's lots of different benefits to different races, but from a pure beginner perspective, it's always good to start off with something like a Red Guard that is extremely beginner friendly. It's free. It's easy to get hold of. It's part of the base game, so you don't have to buy it or anything like that. And one of the early game problems is sustain. So people struggle with their stamina sustain as a tank because as a new player... People spend a lot of time blocking. So to overcome that by being a Dragon Knight and by being a Red Guard, you should overcome all of those issues. Okay. So on to, first of all, just go over the gear for this patch. So if you are a brand new player, you're going to want crafted gear sets to start off with. The reason why, in the past, I've suggested uh, purchasable gear for beginner tanks and what happened was the price inflated because everyone was trying to buy it. So nowadays we go with crafted gear. There are two sets I'm using here. I'm using the Seducer set, first of all. The reason why I go with Seducer for a beginner tank is sustain once again. The number one killer for brand new tanks is the lack of sustain. So when you run out of stamina, you die because you've got nothing to block with. So you take full heavy attacks and you die. So we focus entirely all our efforts into sustain as a beginner player. Now, Seducer is going to be excellent for a beginner tank. You're going to get Magicka Recovery. You're going to get Max Magicka. You're going to get additional Magicka Recovery and then reduces the cost of your magic abilities by 10%. So what we're going to do here is we're benefiting all from Magicka-based side of things. Everything on this gear set is beneficial to a tank, especially a Dragonite tank. I'll go over this in more detail in a minute, but the reason why is because we can convert Magicka into Stamina. Stamina is our primary resource for blocking, and we can get it just by boosting our Magicka recovery and then converting Magicka into Stamina. So that is how you sustain a Dragonite, by having as much Magicka recovery, reduced Magicka cost as possible. This is going to be fantastic. So our first gear set is Armor of the Seducer. And then our second gear set is Druid's Braid. Now, having stats on a tank is important. Now, there's a lot of other gear sets you could use. Obviously, you could use a different crafted gear set if you wanted to. The reason why I choose Druid's Braid for a beginner tank is because when you're starting off as a tank, this is like from the perspective of a player who doesn't have any gear and hasn't tanked before. You start the game. You want to be a tank. You join a guild, ask someone to craft you this gear. It's hard to craft this yourself. You need seven traits learned in your crafting to be able to craft this yourself. But by joining a guild, you should be able to get somebody to craft this for you. If not, go into the Tank Club Discord and ask somebody in there. We've got all the relevant channels for every single server and platform, and we'll find somebody who can help you. If not, even I can help you myself, because I play on four different servers, so I'll be able to kind of help people out with that as well. But you want to get this crafted. And the reason why is because, basically, it's a 12-piece gear set. It's got a bonus for every single one piece. And... What we're going to do is we're going to benefit from having really, really nice high stats as a beginner player. Now, the reason why this is a good set is because you want to have this as you go on to farm gear that you actually need. So this isn't going to be used later in the game. But at this point in time, as you can see, I'm using it at CP150 because I don't want to use all my materials to craft it. Because it's just a temporary set. Now, what would happen is you would go and tank a dungeon, for example. 
and you'll be looking for a monster set. So let's say the Engine Guardian monster set. But you're not going to have that straight away. Now by using Druid's Braid, you can go and you can go and do the dungeon. And you can go and get the Engine Guardian monster set. And then you equip it once you've got it. You then might go and get the shoulder, but maybe you don't get the shoulder straight away. It might take you a few attempts to get the shoulder to go with the helmet. So you just leave your Druid's Braid on until you get it. And then once you get it, you take the Druid's Braid off. You put the Engine Guardian on. And there you go. And so what happens is, as you progressively pick up gear, you can just remove one piece at a time of Druid's Braid. You're not going to lose any benefits because there's a one piece benefit for every single piece. So you can just start equipping gear and unequipping gear until you've got your gear sets ready to go. So it's a really nice progressive set to bring in for this point in time. Now, if you did want to be more useful as a tank, you could use Turok's Pact instead. So you could say, okay, well, I don't want to use this uh, Druid's Braid set because this is like a, it's a selfish tank set. You could go down the buff route and you could go with Turok's Pact, which is a crafted set, which works as a damage booster for your group. So if you wanted to start working on improving yourself as a tank, you just switch this set out and you'd bring in Torx Pact instead. So that is another option. Now, in terms of gear progression, you would move away from both of these gear sets. So you would move away from Druid's Braid, you'd move away from Sedusa, and you'd go on to use other gear, such as uh, Worm Cult. You'd start doing dungeons and picking up Turning Tide. You'd pick up Ebon, potentially. There's a lot of different gear sets. You can find a list of gear sets on the Tank Club website and they're kind of listed in how in order of how good they are. So there's like a category for must-have tank sets. Those are the ones you've got to have. Then there's like situational gear sets, which you could get, you need to get eventually, and they're used for like different situations, but they're not as good as the other ones. And then there's like really not so used gear sets, which you might get asked to use now and again. So there is a lot of gear to farm, but you just want to prioritize the main section. Um, and you, as you're progressing, that's what this gear set is for. This is a beginner build because you're progressively going to earn that gear. Now, from this particular setup, you'd probably go and do um, Vaults of Madness, and you'd get Worm Cool on your weapons and the jewellery, and then you'd put heavy Torugs Pact on your body pieces, and you'd get the Engine Guardian monster set. That would be a good way to convert this, because Sedusa, the Sedusa gear set is basically a selfish version of Worm Cool. Worm Cool is a group version of Sedusa, is how I like to see it. In terms of progressing on your body pieces, you'd go to something like Ebon, which is going to give you a health buff, but it's going to give your group a buff as well. And then you would progress away from Ebon later on, because Ebon isn't a great set to use for group content anymore, but it's still a nice, easy set to farm. You'd progress. You could use, like I say, Torux Pact as well, because that's a crafted set easy to get, and it's a group buff. It depends like how you're going to look at it. In terms of your monster set, Engine Guardian. You have to do veteran dungeons for monster sets, though. So you have to go... You want to get Engine Guardian... That'll mean you don't need to use any kind of sustain gear sets anymore. You don't need any selfish gear sets anymore because you can just use the monster set. Monster sets are the least powerful thing towards group content. So it's the first thing you should try to use if you have problems. Switch your monster set if you have issues rather than a whole five piece of gear. And that'll be much, much better. Now, in terms of traits and things that you want to get... On your one-hander as a Dragon Knight tank, you want to go with Charged. This is going to increase the chance of the player status effect. What this means is when you proc your weapon enchant, the poison damage just there, that's going to inflict the poison effect on the enemy. And because you're a Dragon Knight, you're going to get a thousand stamina every time that happens. Now your enchant has got a five second cooldown. So you can activate this on cooldown to benefit from getting that 1000 stamina return. Now at the moment, as of, right to, of now, right today, the cutting defense champion point passive is broken. We're looking at trying to get that fixed. And hopefully that is going to be a good one to use for beginner tanks because it's going to proc this weapon enchant on cooldown. When you're standing there holding block, you'll be able to proc it. So that is why we use charge poison on a Dragon Knight tank. If you were a different class, you would use something else. You'd use infused with absorbed stamina if you wanted to have a similar effect. On your... Ice Staff. You want to use an Ice Staff. I've got a video on why you should use an Ice Staff over on my YouTube channel. It is in my Tank Basics series. Ice Staff opens the door to so many skills, passives, and benefits. It is too good not to use it, and it's basically the same as using a one-hand and shield. It's almost as defensive as using a one-hand and shield. You can block damage with an Ice Staff without any issues. You can take heavy attacks with an Ice Staff. No problem. So it's really, really easy to do so. 
Now, for the ice staff, use infused crusher. This is one of the main big reasons why we use this, is because we want to get the benefit of a two-handed weapon with the infused crusher. Now, on the body pieces, you want to be all sturdy. On the body pieces and the shield, you go full sturdy. This is to reduce the cost of block. There is no real better option for a beginner player because you are going to be blocking a lot most likely. This is going to be the most beneficial trait to go for. To get my stats averaged out in the right kind of way, as a beginner player, I think using stamina enchants on your big pieces. Your big pieces including your head, your chest and your legs. If you look at the enchant difference there, can you see how big the stamina enchant is compared to the magicka enchants? So on the legs, the chest and the head, that's a big slot. You're going to get the full benefit of an enchant on those slots. So use stamina. On the small slots, so the shoulder, the waist, the hands, the feet, you go with magicka. It gives you a much smaller enchant, so you don't want to put your stamina on those ones. You could go all stamina if you've got enough magicka, but generally you want to try and balance it out. On the shield, I just use a health because on my front bar, I want to have more health because I'll typically be blocking on the front bar. So I'll put a health one on the shield just to kind of bring that health up when I'm on my front bar. The best end chance to go with, though, is tri-stat. Because compared to what I'm using right now, if I was using all tri-stat glyphs, I'd get over 2,000 more overall stats by using tri-stat. However, for a beginner tank build, in this kind of gear that I'm intending on replacing later down the line, it wouldn't be worth it. You'd only get the tri-stat glyphs in a situation where you've got like a proper gear set that you're going to keep hold of. So when you've got like your Yolnukarin gear set from the Sunspire Trial, that is a gear set that has been locked in and used now for over two years. So that is a safe setup to use. It's worth investing in a gear set like that, golding it out. Getting your max enchants on there, your gold enchants. It's worth getting your um, your tri-stack glyphs on there. So don't waste tri-stack glyphs and gold um, upgrade materials on a beginner setup like this. Save those for your really, really important, vital, must-have locked-in gear sets later down the line. In terms of your jewellery... You could just go with Robust to bring up your stamina. You could go with Healthy. You could go one of each. One Healthy, one Arcane, one Robust, depending on what stats you need. But three Robust for me is fine, and three Magicka Recovery on those as well. And that is it for my uh, Beginner Tank gear setup. If you look at my stats real quick, I've got some really nice uh, stats there. So 22.7 Magicka, 39k health, 27.4k stamina, 1.8k Magicka Recovery, and... Uh, that is perfect for this particular setup. If we look at the skills now. So this is a beginner tank skill bar. It's intended to be something that you don't need to really switch around. And it's something you're going to use until you start doing um, harder content. So for a beginner level stuff, Pierce Armor must have it to taunt. You need it to taunt the enemies and debuff the enemies for your group so they take more damage. Most vital skill. Um, next you've got Heroic Slash. This is kind of a flex skill. If you want to switch this out for something else, you can. But this reduces the enemy's damage, and it gives you ultimate back. So it's really, really nice. I mean, it's important as a Dragon Knight tank to get your ultimate back as fast as possible, so that minor heroism is extremely important. The next skill we've got for our beginner tank build, Igneous Shield. One of the most vital skills you're going to have as a beginner tank. So every time your magicka is full, you should be casting an Igneous Shield. And the reason why is every time you cast it, you're going to get 990 stamina back. That is the main reason why. So because of your Earthen Heart passives, you cast it, the Helping Hands passive will proc and it'll give you 990 stamina. Not only that, but it gives you a damage shield, a really nice big damage shield. It gives your group a damage shield and it also gives you Major Mending, which means if you then do a healing skill afterwards, you'll get a bigger heal. So that's why we use it. It's a great skill. Okay, next, this is new for High Isle, Coagulating Blood. This is going to heal you straight up, as you can see here, for 69.69. Um, and it's going to increase by up to 50% additional healing based on your missing health. So this is a much bigger heal than the other morph now. And as a beginner tank, you're probably going to panic heal more often than you would as a more experienced tank. Which means you're going to get much more value for your magic cost by using Coagulating Blood. If you use Green Dragon Blood, you have to be really, really... little really, really low on health to get the full benefit of it. So if you are a newer player, you will panic heal more often. So if you're not using this morph, you will have much less healing coming in. If you heal at 80% with coagulating blood, you'll probably heal to full health. 
if you use green dragon blood at 80% health, it'll probably heal you to like 90% of your health. And you'll still be 10% missing. So it's not really worth it in terms of this level of play. So very good skill. It's also going to give you increased health recovery. And that is that. Next you've got Cinderstorm. The reason I've slotted this for a beginner tank build is because it's a heal over time. So now you've got three ways to survive. You've got Igneous Shield, which is going to give you a shield to stop you from taking damage. You've then got a burst heal for when you need a lot of healing very, very quickly. You've then got a heal over time, which is going to heal you every second, which means you shouldn't need to use as many burst heals because you've got a slow ticking heal over the duration of time. So you use Cinderstorm, put it on the ground, put it underneath you, and it's going to give you 1,567 healing every second. It also charges you 333 Magicka per second, which basically means it's not really costing anything because your Magicka recovery is 1,800, and this is costing 333 Magicka every second. Magicka recovery ticks every two seconds, so your Magicka recovery overlaps it and gives you more back than what you're using up. So it's really good to go into any kind of boss fight or ad pull, throw this down as a first and then stand on it, and then you'll just get, keep getting a constant heal. On the front bar, you've got Replenishing Barrier. Some people will like, struggle to get this, but it's a good way to have survival for your group and yourself. If something happens, something goes wrong, you give yourself a damage shield. Um, it also gives you Magicka Recovery if you have the passives. If you wanted something else, you've got Magma Armor, and then Magma Shell, which would be another good safety ultimate. Or also, you've got Shield Wall, which you could go for either Morph, but Spell Wall might be the better one to reject, uh, to reflect projectiles. So use a different ultimate if you want there, just as kind of a safety uh, like situation for a beginner player. Uh, but the nicest one really is Barrier for that extra magical recovery. That's the main reason. On the back bar, you've got Inner Rage, which is a long distance range taunt. And it's magicka costing. So if you've run out of stamina, you can still get aggro of enemies because you're using it in a rage. So you can range taunt them. Um, with pierce armor, you can only taunt things that are right next to you. Now you could also use destructive clench, but this is this is only a 15 meter skill. As a beginner tank, you might need to switch it around and do the other. So this one's going to give you more buffs and debuffs. But in a fire, in a rage, is going to give you a much bigger range on that particular skill. Next, we go on to our crowd control. So, Frost Pulsar, another another like destruction staff skill. The reason why we use Frost Pulsar is to control the enemies, to immobilize enemies. So, when we go and do content as a tank, you are responsible for crowd controlling the enemies. What that means is you need to pull them into a stack and you need to hold them in place for your group. So we've got three skills to do that. We've got Frost Pulsar, we've got Blockade, and we've got Chains. So you want to go into an ad pull. When you've got a group of ads in a dungeon, you walk in and you put down Frost Blockade. Then you chain the enemies with Unrelenting Grip, so you pull in all the ranged enemies onto your blockade. Once they're all there, you cast Pulsar. And then what Pulsar is going to do is it inflicts Minor Mangle, which reduces the enemy's health by 10%, which is huge. It basically gives you... 10% of the DPS straight away because you're reducing it down. Then you get uh, minor protection for you and your group as well, reducing your damage taken by 5%, but everyone else in your group as well. It also causes AoE minor brittle, which in like it basically puts um, AoE minor main, reducing enemies' damage by 5%, the enemy that they're doing to you, and increases the damage they take by 10%. So this is a really, really fantastic skill. The reason why this works is it causes the chilled effect... And if you look at the bottom of blockade here, chilled enemies become frozen and are immobilized. So you put down the blockade, and then when you use the pulsar when they stood on it, they become immobilized from the from the chilled effect. And if it doesn't work the first time, you can double cast pulsar. That's sometimes what you have to do to make sure that everything gets immobilized. Double cast it, everything gets stuck in place. Another good thing from this is it gives you a huge damage shield of 10.1k just there by giving you the option of, like... The projectiles come in, so when things are shooting magic damage at you or arrows and stuff from distance, this will absorb them for you and your group as well. The next skill, Balance. Now this is for Major Resolve, so you get increased resistances, but not only that, you'll also get Magicka back. So this is how you sustain using Chains, Blockade and Pulsar. Uh, so you have to be casting Balance in regular intervals. Now this is not a problem because you'll be having, your health recovery will be ticking, your Cinderstorm will be ticking, and if you cast Igneous Shield, 
before you cast balance, you won't even notice this 5k health missing. So if I show you here, look, if we cast, if we've got this down on the ground, we cast Igneous Shield, then we cast Balance. As you can see there, our health is back in like two seconds max. So you shouldn't be afraid to use this skill because it costs health. Because even though it's going to negate your healing for four seconds, it's unnoticeable when you've got these things working. As you see there, look, it's straight up. Like your health recovery isn't if affected by the healing debuff from this skill. So it's a healing debuff. Reduces... Your healing done and damage shield strength by 50%. That's why you cast Igneous Shield first, then you cast Balance. Then you get your Magicka back, you lose some health, but then it ticks back to full within that two seconds. So it's not an issue. Your final skill is Unrelenting Grip. This is a chain. It just pulls enemies to you. Absolutely important because that is how you have to crowd control enemies. And then your final skill is Aggressive Horn. This is going to give you all your resources back. This is your main ultimate and you want to get it. Even as a beginner player, these skills are all vital. I would even say like things like balance is vital. You don't really want to use any other skill for major resolve. This is the one you need to use because it's not going to cause you any kind of problems. It's going to be a huge benefit to you when you've got that extra magicka sustained by being able to cast balance. Um, and yeah, when you use your horn, you're going to get all of your resources back and it's going to increase your max magicka and max stamina as well. It's just very, very good. On your passives... Basically, in Ardent Flame, you don't need to really take anything other than the Combustion Passive unless you are actually using skills from this skill line that are going to be beneficial. So if you're using Gulf and Flames, for example, you want to take some of these passives, but you don't need to. Combustion is the only one you need. So when you apply Burn into an enemy, you restore 1,000 Magicka. Uh, Unrelenting Grip can proc the Burning Effect, so that's going to give you Magicka back when you cast Unrelenting Grip. The Poison to an enemy... Gives you a thousand stamina back. You're gonna get that from your one hand and your enchant. So you're gonna proc both passives here on this combustion passive, which is very, very useful for your sustain. On draconic power, increases the amount of damage you can block, obviously, really useful for a tank. It increases your healing received. Again, great if you've got a healer and they're giving you some heals, it's gonna increase the amount you get healed. Elder Dragon increases your health recovery, which is okay. It's not a big deal, but it will work. Um, and increases the range of your melee attacks. That is actually quite useful. It means you can taunt with a bigger gap between you and the enemy. So that is actually pretty nice to have that one. And then Scaled Armor gives you more resistances, which are obviously very useful for a tank. On the Earthen Heart passives, these are the most important ones. Increases the duration of your Earthen Heart abilities. So Igneous Shield, fantastic. Cinder Storm, fantastic. You get increased duration because you've got this one. So you need to have that. Battle Roar, when you cast an ultimate, you get your resources back. This is why you get so many resources back when you cast your ultimate. And this is how we sustain so easily. So you want to be using your ultimate as soon as you can. As soon as you've got your ultimate available, use it. And you're going to proc your Battle Roar passive, you'll get all of your resources back. Try and make sure, though, that before you use your ultimate, try and burn out your resources. So use as much magic and Stamina as you can, then use your ultimate to get as much back. Because if you've got full resources and then you use your ultimate... You're not getting anything back in return. So yeah, you don't... You, the main function of your ultimate isn't to give you the resources, but it's a very, very good, like, side part to that, which you might as well try and make use of if you can. Mountain's Blessing. This is a group buff. So it's going to give your group a damage buff, but it's also going to give you ultimate. So every time you cast Igneous Shield, you cast an Igneous Shield for the shield, for the stamina, you're casting it for the Major Mending, and it's also going to give you three ultimate back once every six seconds when you cast it. So it's an ultimate gain skill and the group buff. And then finally, the helping hand passive, which we already mentioned. Every time you cast an earthen heart ability, you get 990 stamina. That does even include Cinderstorm. So this is a great method for sustain. If you are missing loads of stamina... So let's say we burnt through our stamina... You can cast Igneous Shield. And look, every time you cast Igneous Shield, look at my stamina bar, it goes up. But that's costing me a lot of magic to do that. You could also just cast Cinderstorm. And it'll do the exact same thing and cost basically nothing on the magic side of things. If you look at my magic bar and my stamina bar now, it's doing the same thing as Igneous Shield. It's just not costing me anything. So this is how you would sustain a Dragonite tank, is by using these methods... Of sustain gain. And they both have the same animation as well. So when your character uses the animation, it's the same animation. 
which is uh, which is good. There you go. Um, in terms of your passives, obviously you take all your one hand and shield passives on your destruction staff. This is where you have to be clever. You can choose to take the Trifocus passive or not. I personally don't take it with a Dragonite tank. I've got it here, but I don't like to use it because I wanted to show you this example. That's why I've picked it up. So if I if I burn through my Magicka, if you use the Trifocus passive, it stops your Magicka recovery from working. So as you can see there, my Magicka is not going up. And that is a big problem with a build like this. If you're casting Pulsar, Blockade and Chains, you're not going to have the Magicka to also block and cast Pulsar, Blockade, Chains, Igneous Shield. You don't have enough Magicka to do that and block with Magicka, as you can see, because now I can't block, I can't cast any Magicka skills, I've got no way to cast any Magicka skills. So it's a real problem if I decide, and as, as my Magicka's going down here, my Cinder Storm's there, now I've dropped Block, look, I can't block. Because once, once my character drops block here, it's because I've run out of Magicka to block. So, be very careful if you decide to go with this. On a Dragonite tank, absolutely not worth it. On other classes, it can be. Because what it means is, if you run low on stamina, you can switch to your back bar and you can get stamina back. But your Magicka stops going up. On a Dragonite, you've got so many Magicka skills and they're so expensive on the Magicka side. It's not worth it. So don't take Trifocus on a Dragonite tank. Um, for, for a... For your passives here, you want to have Elemental Force. You need this to get that chilled effect with your Pulsar Blockade. And Ancient Knowledge, definitely want to have this because this is what makes the Ice Staff a tank weapon with your blocking uh, reduced in cost and increases the amount of damage you can block down there. And then Destruction Expert is a little bit of a, a magic gain when you're using your Ice Staff. I'm using 5-1-1 on this build, which means 5 heavy, 1 medium, 1 light. So you'd obviously take your light armor passives, but you only need to take the first three, really. Grace, uh, this one and this one. The others are not really that vital. And then the medium armor passive, same again. You don't really need to take many of these. You can take this one if you want increased crit healing. But 2%, is it worth it for one piece of medium? Probably not. You definitely want to take this one, Windwalker, to reduce your stamina cost of abilities by 2%. And you definitely want to take Athletics to reduce the cost of your dodge roll and movement speed of Sprint. But the other ones are not really that important. On your Heavy Armor, you take all your passives. Undaunted, you want to take all your Undaunted passives as well for the increased stats. 6% more stats. And Synergies will give you more resources back. Um, Mages Guild, because we're using Balance, you want to use the first three passives. So Major Depth, Everlasting Magic, Magical Controller. You don't need to take the last one because this just buffs your heavy attacks, which you're not really going to be using anyway. But yeah, you definitely want to get the Max Magicka and the Magicka Recovery. You definitely want to get the increased duration and you definitely want to get um, the reduced cost of your Mage's Guild abilities. Obviously, we're using uh, Barrier, so you want to have that Magicka Raid passive in there to get that Magicka Recovery. You want to take all of your Racial Passives and then finally, you want to take your medicinal use so that when you use a potion, you get a benefit from using them for longer. There we go. So that is my beginner tank build for this patch.